Hey everyone, this is Mace Rock here, and in today's video, I'll be teaching you all how to do the Rallic whistle, which goes like. So, this is going to be my take on the Rallic whistle. There are already a couple of tutorials out on this sound on YouTube, but I feel like in the tutorials, people talk more or less about the same thing. And if you're struggling with the sound, or if you're struggling with learning from the tutorials, this is the video for you. Let me turn the piano off. Because in today's video, I want to provide an alternative way of learning and thinking about the sound, an updated kind of way so that you will learn the sound. In today's video, we are going to talk about the difficulty of the sound. On the scale of 1 to 10, how difficult is it to learn and perform the sound? We are also going to talk about the sound itself and how it works, so what it is and how it works to really give you an idea of what it is that we're learning today. Then we are going to talk about how to actually physically perform the sound, how to get the sound to happen in your mouth, step by step. And then at the end of the video, I really want to discuss some of the possibilities that this sound allows for and some of its variations, because this is a very versatile sound and I highly encourage you experiment with it. So starting with the difficulty, the Raleigh whistle is not a very hard sound. And I think on a scale of one to 10, it scores a three to a four out of 10. It's not very hard to learn, nor is it very hard to master. I'll try making learning this sound as straightforward as possible. Now, what is the Raleigh whistle? The Raleigh whistle is this outward whistle sound that we use in beatboxing. And it goes like this. The word Raleigh in Raleigh whistle basically means that we think that a beatboxer by the name of Ralik introduced this whistle to the beatboxing community. So go check out Ralik. He's actually really, really cool and he's very good with this whistle. You also hear people calling this whistle the Hardzell whistle. That's because a beatboxer by the name of Hardzell really, really popularized this whistle in the community. So the Ralik whistle is a pretty known sound and a very desired sound by many people. Now I want to click. Now I want to click. Now I want to quickly go over how this sound works and some of the confusion surrounding the sound. So this sound works by basically taking your tongue and positioning it up in the mouth so that the sides of the tongue are anchored against the teeth, sealing all the possible gaps around that area. And then the tip of the tongue is retracted backwards slightly and is positioned around here around that fleshy ridge just above the teeth. So then once everything on the sides is sealed and that little gap with the tip of the tongue is created, we make sure there is a slight hollow cavity above the tongue. And then as we breathe air out, the air goes through the cavity, exits through the little hole, creating a nice little monopole whistle. And that is the Raleigh whistle. Many people confuse the Raleigh whistle for this kind of SH whistle, which goes like I am very bad at this whistle, but I hope you know what I'm talking about. If you ever heard your grandma like whistle or something. <laughs> but this is not the Raleigh whistle. You can kind of see where the confusion is coming from. I mean, the position looks kind of similar. The tone, the flow of air sounds kind of similar. But I think a very important characteristic of the Raleigh whistle is the dropped down jaw. You should be able to drop your jaw down and still be able to create the whistle. So your teeth are unclenched, unlike in the SH whistle. They are different things. This sound is also not a throat whistle, like how Villain does his throat whistle, nor is it a kind of palatal whistle like Zeka's whistle or the Mexican whistle. It is not done with the base or the middle of the tongue. Instead, it's done with the tip very in the front of the mouth. Now, if you didn't really understand what I was talking about before, it's totally okay, because this is now the stage where we learn the sound, and hopefully what I said before will make sense. I have here a way of learning the sound that is hopefully very accessible to everyone. So no matter if you have experience with whistles or you don't, all you need for this one is an understanding of how to do the pucker whistle. This is the most common whistle in human whistling, and almost everyone can do the sound. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to take you from the pucker whistle to the Raleigh whistle, <laughs> step by step. So if you're more experienced, you can maybe skip some of the first steps and then continue with some of the later steps. Or if you're struggling with the positioning of the tongue in a certain space, you might want to pay attention to some. You get me. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the pucker whistle. 
Do the pucker whistle and notice how your tongue is positioned kind of like this. And notice how your lips are in a circular pucker shape. These are the components for a pucker whistle. Now what I want you to do now is I want you to take your, the tip of your tongue and I want you to make it touch the back side of the bottom lip, like this. And now I want you to try and get the same whistle out, like this. Be very gentle with your tongue, no tongue tricks are required in the learning of this whistle at all. With some practice you should be able to get there pretty easily. Now we're gonna take it a step further. What I want you to do now is I want you to take that tip of your tongue and put it above your bottom lip, like this. And try and do the same whistle. This might take a bit more practice, but with a bit of effort put into it, you should be able to get the sound. And I hope you see what we're doing here. Because if you look, what we have done is we have already eliminated the bottom lip from the equation entirely. We are now doing a pucker whistle with our lip and our tongue. And now this is starting to resemble a rallic whistle, because if you look, all we have to do from here is just move the tongue further back into the mouth. This is a great way for learning the sound if you're not experienced with whistles and the rallic whistle tongue position is pretty tricky, so maybe training it like this will get you used to kind of stabilizing your tongue in that position, keeping it up there, keeping it clenched, against the sides of the teeth because that's kind of what happens automatically. And then once you can get out a clear tone, I'm sure you have no trouble moving it further back into the mouth, <laughs> eliminating the top lip from the equation also. And that is how the Rallick whistle is done. So great, you have now learned how to do the basic raw Rallick whistle. Now let's talk about all the exciting possibilities that this sound has provided you with, which there are a lot of. So I'm just going to name a couple off the top of my head that I think are worthy of talking about here. Starting with probably the most unique and striking thing about this whistle, the warble. The Rallick whistle warble is truly, truly very unique and it essentially allows you to change the pitch of the whistle without having to make any adjustments to the tongue position and instead using the lips to change the hole through which the whistle flies out to kind of change the pitch. It's an effect we observe in other monopole whistles as well, like take the pucker whistle for example, and put your hand in front of your mouth and try and change the hole size with your other palm. It's a very curious effect. I believe we also observe this in villain's throat whistle techniques. <sighs> Only, unfortunately, I'm too bad at throw whistles to actually be able to demonstrate this properly. But speaking of the warble, there are actually different warble variations for this whistle. Warble in whistling meaning a technique to change the pitch of the whistle. The most popular way to warble a rallic whistle is through this kind of position, where it's a sort of weird frown looking shape where you create two holes on the side of the mouth, basically moving the hole from the center to the sides. Creates a kind of semitone jump up in Pitch. But we can also do this effect on just one side of the mouth with just one hole. It's exactly the same effect, just change the shape of the hole through which the whistle exits. We can also do this with different vowel shapes like ah, wah, wah. We can also do this with our teeth. And we can also do it under our teeth. So basically the nature of the Rallick whistle allows us to use our lips outside of the whistle, which also means we can push the whistle out through different lip oscillations. We see people like collapse doing this all the time. Another thing that's really, really cool to do with the Rallick whistle is the little register flips, which is kind of like a voice crack, but in a whistle. Also an effect we observe in other monopole whistles, like again, the pucker whistle. you can kind of make it break into a higher version of itself, kind of like a voice crack, and it's usually an octave higher than the original sort of bass pitch of the whistle. I like this effect in the Rallick whistle a lot because it usually requires you to use more air, which can allow for some really cool textures. Highly recommend you check out Kobli for this. 
Register flips also sometimes allow for cool little moments of polyphony where you kind of get two tones at once from the same whistle if you stay right in between that crack of the first and the second register. Of course, this whistle is vocalizable as well and bassifiable with vocal basses. <laughs> Highly recommend you experiment with the sound. I think it's pretty underrated as a sound effect. And on that note, happy beatboxing. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to check out my socials. I have a beatboxing Instagram as well as an art Instagram. I do art, I do digital painting. Make sure to join our Discord server. It's for our little community. I go on there sometimes. You can meet me if you want to. Happy beatboxing.